the Holocaust happened. That isn't opinion, that's fact. And I won't debate fact. Denial is about Professor Deborah Lipstadt, who is a professor of Holocaust studies at Emory University. She's written many books. One of them is called Denying the Holocaust. And in this book, she devoted a few paragraphs about David Irving, who is a British historian who is a Holocaust denier. According to the evidence I've seen, there were no gas chambers anywhere at Auschwitz. As with any ideologue, you speak outrageous things and you find that there are other people who believe those outrageous things. How much money have you made out of that tattoo since 1945? Irving's just sent us notice of a suit to be filed in the High Court. In 1996, he brought a libel suit against me. He was claiming I was defaming him and falsely calling him a Holocaust denier. He wanted to sue her in London because the weight of defense is much more difficult in London. Wait, I have to prove what I said was true? Mm, correct. Yes, but I'm the innocent party. In the US, there's a presumption of innocence. Yeah, not in the UK. Anthony Julius is a solicitor. In the British law system, a solicitor means that you prepare the case. And there's a barrister who argues the case that has been prepared by the solicitor. So Richard Rampton was the barrister. Richard Rampton was wonderful, and Tom Wilkinson portrays him magnificently. This case is happening to you, but it's not about you. He has to convince Deborah that the survivors shouldn't speak. Our strategy is to keep the focus on Irving and Irving alone. Whatever the reasons why people become deniers, when you look closely, they often have an agenda which they won't admit to. So it was really essential to meet Deborah, to get a sense of her central gravity and the way she speaks and moves. We spent a couple of days in my kitchen talking, talking yeah, for hours and hours and hours. I don't think her Brooklyn accent would have endeared her to the court. My friends all say to me, she captured your accent. I said, you think? Suddenly it becomes respectable to say the Holocaust didn't happen. Here is one of the largest killing machines in human history. We know what it is. It's how we prove what it is. The Holocaust happened. Everybody knows it. But once you have to prove that it happened, is harder than you think. There are no holes in that roof. Therefore, there never were any gas chambers. No holes, no Holocaust. He wanted a catchy phrase, he's got it. Obviously, I'm aware that the character that I play is very controversial, but it's my job to play him from his absolute view and give it the texture of a fully rounded character. I'm not a racist. He's a liar and a falsifier of history. This is not a Holocaust movie, it's about the fight for truth and justice around this trial. We argue that Irving deliberately subordinated the truth in order to propagate anti-Semitism and engender sympathy for the Third Reich. You can lie and be held accountable, but you can't say my opinion is equal to fact. The earth is round, the ice caps are melting, and Elvis is not alive. You can argue about how it happened, who was responsible, but you can't debate whether it happened. I didn't bring the prosecution, he did. Settle. And what would you want me to settle for? Four million dead, three? What number would you be comfortable with? You can't fight every battle, because otherwise you go through life fighting. The reason you don't engage with people you disagree with is because you can't. But there's certain battles you can't turn away from.